so it looks like our chess game with the bear continues. Um, I know I've made a few videos about the subject, but there seems to be new developments every day, so I want to uh, just comment on the latest developments and also um, some, some factors around this that I think really need to be spoken about and addressed. Um, so in the latest development, Russia has decided to expel 23 diplomats from Moscow and St. Petersburg. Our ambassador to Russia, Dr. Lloyd Bristol, I believe he um, came across as very balanced under the circumstances. He responded calmly, directly and to the point, and I feel he came across well. Um, the Russians have taken several approaches in retaliation. The expulsion of these 23 diplomats from Moscow, also the um, British consulate in St. Petersburg, which I understand is an unusual uh, move, or at least it's seen as escalating. Um, also, they are going to block the British Council. Now, that's interesting because the British Council is primarily about fostering cultural links. Um, all that is going to do is impact the Russian people. Um, because it is aimed at fostering cultural understanding, cultural um, links, and also provides resources such as English, um, which is the international language. So that's going to impact the average Russian as well. I mean, any Russian who wants to come to the West or, um, or come to the United Kingdom. Um, I want to particularly address something, though, that keeps coming up from those Kremlin apologists um, in our midst. And I'm starting to think that maybe Russia isn't our biggest threat. Maybe our biggest threat is our own weakness, our own... The sheer number of Britons who are willing to actually go out of the way to tell the narrative of of um, the Kremlin. And the, the line is basically, where is the evidence, where is the evidence? This is what Corbyn has been repeatedly coming out with, and he's been praised for it by, by Corbynites, as you would expect. And they're saying, oh, he's the only one being reasonable, he's the only one talking sense. Now, on one hand, you could look at it as Corbyn's being statesmanlike, he is trying to de-escalate the situation. The problem is that Corbyn's insinuation is that, that it is Britain that started the escalation. He is basically using this as an opportunity to attack the Conservatives. He's playing off politics when this nation is under attack. That's not a reasonable position. To me, it just indicates once again why this man is not fit for number 10. Um, now, Corbyn is not outright saying I support Vladimir Putin and he has said we take issue with Putin and Russia on a range of issues including human rights um, uh, the situation in Chechnya and Georgia and well no he didn't mention Georgia but he's sort of trying to deflect this criticism that he's a Kremlin stooge but the problem is that then becomes problematic when you consider that Corbyn's top advisor Seamus Milne only a few years ago, shared a platform with Vladimir Putin. Now, this wasn't in the capacity as foreign secretary or the British ambassador or the prime minister, which would be a justification for having to do that. This was ideological. Seamus Mill has long been a defender of the Russian state, and I'm not talking about Russian culture. I'm talking about the Russian state, formerly the Soviet Union, now the Russian state. Um, this man is a complete disgrace. And he is influencing someone who could be our next our next prime minister. That to me indicates why Corbyn is taking the position that he is. So, on the surface, you might say, "Well, what's wrong with asking for evidence?" And what's wrong with questioning the government? Well, the point is, in normal circumstances, of course, it is the job of the opposition to hold the government to account, and that's how a democracy should function. But backing May on this is not a sellout. It's not the opposition not doing its job. There are times, there are times when a country has to be unified and we have to put on a unified front. Now is such a time. 
because Corbyn is basically just parroting the Kremlin line. And this is a regime that are, they are pathological liars. I mean, this is a gangster state. And all they are doing is trying to further sow distrust and animosity within the West. And Corbyn's helping them to do that. So if you're saying what's reasonable asking for evidence, okay, let's look at the situation. Let's look at the situation. Number one, was there a motive? Absolutely there was. Sergei Skripal was a former Russian spy. He is viewed as a traitor by, by Moscow because technically that's what he was. He defected to the MI6 and he's been living in this country for some time. Now you might follow up, oh, but he... He'd been retired. He was a middle-aged man. He wasn't important. That might work if this was a one-off. Um, but there's already an investigation over the murder of Mr. I believe his name is Mr. Glashkov, who's a friend of Boris Berezovsky, who, of course, was a Putin critic. You know, there is up to 14 other cases being investigated. So this idea that it's just a one-off I've heard people even dismiss it. Oh, it's just an internal, an internal Russian matter. Not when it's brought to our soil, it's not. Um, so that dismissing it as, as that is very misguided. Um, Russia has shown absolutely no remorse for its actions. It's shown more, or if, if you don't believe they are Russian actions, at least consider this. Consider the fact that the Kremlin hasn't even attempted to show any sort of um, sympathy to the police officer who has been infected by this. Even if you think they're not going to have sympathy for Skripal, what about his daughter? What was her crime? You know, she was the daughter. That uh, What is her crime in all of this? Um, but also, this put, could have potentially put the people of Salisbury at risk. You know, um, a city of 40,000 people. And as I understand it, there were people treated in hospital. So this was an act of um, state terrorism on our soil. And the, the crass attitude the Kremlin has taken from us, basically all but laughing about it, showing sarcasm, showing arrogance, it's disgraceful. It's disgusting, in fact. Um, there is a history, there is a precedent. Now, that is important because people who are saying show the evidence, the implication there is, you know, why would Russia do it? But the point is, there is a long track record of this going back to Alexander Litvinenko in 2006. And of course, there was all of the predecessor cases during the Cold War with, um, with the Soviet Union. Uh, Russia was the dominant state within the Soviet Union, so the Russian Federation is the successor state to the Soviet Union. And if Putin had his way, the Soviet Union would never have gone. Um, the history is there. I have a book. This is Banned in Russia, written by Alexander Litvinenko. There's a preface by a friend. It was published posthumously. Um, you know, I wrote something in this when I bought it on contemplating the new Cold War. That was 10 years ago. And we're still in this situation. There is a long, long track record of Russia behaving this way. Um, the Kremlin saw Skripal as a traitor. Kremlin punished him. That's how they see it. Of course, they're not going to be honest about it. That's not how espionage works. Well, you know, They're not going to say, oh yeah, we done it. A anyone who knows anything about espionage, hell, you just have to have seen a few films, for goodness sake. It's, it's not rocket science. They're not going to admit it. Why would they? Um, now, the scientist that has uh, helped to develop this agent, um, Novichok, a man by the name of Vil Mirsayanov, has said that it is of such a complex nature that only, only a state player could have been involved. Um, so, if you don't believe it's a Russian state, and if you keep parroting this line, show the evidence. Well, then you have to ask the alternative question. If it wasn't the Kremlin, who was it? Who was it? Let's look at the possibilities. ISIS, uh, i.e. Islamist terrorists. 
well, that would not go with their modus operandi. Their modus operandi is either bombs or vehicular attacks. So if it was ISIS, it would be quite a radical step away from that. Also, why would they target a Russian national? Well, actually, a British national of Russian descent. You, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't really follow up. Um, try and sew up uh, bad relations between Britain and Russia. Why? We've already, we already have bad relations. We don't need ISIS or any other terrorist group to, you know, act as the middlemen in that regard. Um, so it's just a nonsense conspiracy theory. Uh, mafia, that's perhaps a little bit more um, plausible, but there's no indication that Sergei Skripal had any links to organised crime. Admittedly, there are other Ru Russian nationals who have met on tiny ends in this country who were involved in organised crime, so that may well be have been mafia situations. But this case, Skripal is a former KGB agent. So it seems far more plausible that it was, in fact, the Russian state. When you weigh everything up, it, the real question is, where is the evidence that Russia wasn't involved? Where is the basis for saying that Russia wasn't involved? The only thing they have offered so far is, oh, what would Putin gain from it coming up to an election? I would suggest it makes him look tough to his base. You know, he's standing up to the Brits. Makes him look tough. It's classic populism. Um, so when you weigh up everything, that's your evidence. This idea, I mean, for Corbyn to actually ask, have you complied by the Russian demand to see the evidence? Why the hell would you give Russia the evidence so they can tamper with it, so they can lie about it? I mean, would you give, I know I've used this analogy before, but would you give the burglar the stolen goods. No, you would give it to the judge. So that's just nonsensical to hand it over to Russia. People say, oh, well, let, uh, let neutral inspectors have a look. As I understand it, uh, UN inspectors are in the process of examining this. Also, if there is any significant doubt over the British position, why would France, Germany, the United States and other Western powers back Britain without question? Okay, um, if they had any significant doubt, why would they, you know, risk damaging their relations with Russia? It indicates to me that they believe the British um, claim and the British assessment has a lot of credibility. So you, when it comes down to it, you either believe the Kremlin is telling the truth or you believe that everyone else is wrong. Pick your side. Um, there's only a few more things I want to say. Um, I'm going to try and keep this under 20 minutes. Um, what happens next? I don't know. We've had this tit for tat. It's the most serious since the Cold War, more serious than the fallout from the Litvinenko affair. Um, but it is true that when Heath expelled the Russians in 1971, the Soviets, it did have a reverse effect on Russian intelligence operations within Britain. So it works. I don't think it's a knee-jerk reaction. I think it's a proportionate, tough, robust response. The Prime Minister would be criticised if she wasn't taking a hard line. She has to take a hard line. And it does make you wonder, let's say for the sake of argument, Corbyn was in number 10. How would he respond to this? How would he respond to this? It's all very well the fact that he's opposition leader, but this is a man that could, could become our next Prime Minister. You know, it was laughable a few years ago, but because of the activities and momentum and the sort of um, way that, well, the way that things have developed, um, there is a chance this man could be in number 10. How would Corbyn respond to that? I'll probably bring that up in another video because, like I said, I don't want to make this too long-winded, but this is a very serious question. And when you consider that Seamus Milne is Corbyn's top advisor, it starts to make sense now. The people who are towing the Russian line, I, I despair. I just find it so disturbing that there are people in this country, and a worrying number of them, who are so quick to, to play the game of, oh, well, Russia might be innocent. I mean, I've seen people blame Mossad, 
blame the Rothschilds, blame the Clintons, blame everybody but Russia. Uh, and I just find it despicable. I really want to shake these people and say, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you stabbing your own country in the back? At a time when we are under attack, it doesn't matter what you think of Theresa May. We are under attack. And it makes no sense to be playing the devil's advocate for the very people who are attacking us. What the hell is wrong with people? You don't need to be a blood and soil nationalist to see this. You just need an ounce of common sense. I mean, they just, they're either being astonishingly naive or they are playing dangerous ideological games. I do believe that there are Corbynites out there who will oppose the Conservatives no matter what. The point here is that an opposition, at its job is to hold the government to account and ask questions, right? That's absolutely true. But it's also true that there are times there needs to be a unified front. And those Corbynites who are basically copying word for word what the Kremlin is saying, it's despicable. It really is. I mean, the conspiracy theories that they're, the conspiracy theories that they're coming out with are absurd. These are people who hate the Conservative government so much that they cannot be reasonable. They cannot see that there are other powerful players in this world who would do us harm. You can go on continuing hating the Tories after this, but for goodness sake, see reason. I don't, I am not a Tory voter. You know, I've never voted Conservative in my life. I share a lot of Labour's concerns about what the Tories are doing. All those things are legitimate. But that doesn't mean that you then play the Kremlin's line. I mean, there are things going on right now that people are now reverting to Russia because um, they take issue with things that are going on here. The Telford abuse scandal, for example, there is justified condemnation of the BBC and its lack of coverage of that. And that justific that uh, condemnation is absolutely right. But what's RT doing? It's now reporting it. So people are now lapping up the Russian agenda as being good for Britain. But Russia today doesn't give a damn about the Telford abuse victims. Russia today will do anything to take advantage of mistrust in this country. And people need to know that. You know, I know the BBC is biased. I know that Sky News is biased. I know our newspapers are biased. But you can accept that there's bias there without going out of your way to pander to our adversaries. I mean, and that brings me to the point of question time last night. Um, had one, one of their speakers was one Ashin Ratansi. He is a British citizen who is an anchor for RT. Firstly, he smeared the daughter of Sergei Skripal by saying she was a spy as well. I haven't seen any indication of that. Um, he then came out with this line of, we can no longer trust our governments. Uh, he was being smart. He used the plural and he thanked the BBC for letting him appear there. He used the plural, we can no longer trust our governments. What he was actually saying was, we we can no longer trust the British government. The point is, Ratansi is a tool of the Kremlin. So Ratansi isn't talking about Putin and the Russian government. And I wish someone had held him to account for that and said, wait a second, you don't mean Putin, though. Well, as soon as he said that we can't trust our governments, uh, someone should have interjected and said, obviously, uh, except for Putin, because that's what Ratansi was doing. Uh, and it's typical of an RT show. That's what they do. Their job role is not journalism. Their job role is to discredit the West at every given opportunity. I accept at this point that RT is probably not going to be blocked. Um, for one thing, there would be repercussions on British media outlets in Russia. But I do think it should come under far, far, far more scrutiny. It's got away with too much for too long. People who think it's just another network really are not paying attention. Russia Today was explicitly set up in order to spread disinformation and discredit the West. What they do is invite on conspiracy theorists and people with a grudge 
people like George Galloway, Alex Salmon, and Ken Livingston, who will say what they want them to say. RT is not just, um, you know, we uh, forget what the tagline is, but they are not simply asking questions. What they are doing is getting people who have animosity towards their own country, who will vindicate RT's ideology. That's what they want to do. Now, you could say that is true of every network, but few networks are as slavishly close to a government as RT is. I mean, it is a wing of the Kremlin. Say what you want about the BBC, but actually conservative politicians have often accused the BBC of being too left-wing and against them. British ministers are questioned on the BBC. That's the difference. So there is no comparison in that regard. I mean, I, I just find it very disturbing. The Independent said that RT wasn't influential. Unfortunately, I think it is quite influential. Because the number of people who blindly believe everything it tells them is disturbing. I mean, RT's agenda is to spread mistrust and present Russia in a good light, present, present the West, excuse me, in a bad light. That's what Ratanti was doing on Question Time. There were angry calls uh, for there to be a walkout, for there to... Um, Unfortunately, anything could play into Russian hands, but I think it's an absolute disgrace that the BBC invited him on, to invite on the enemy, to do what? To, to further spread propaganda against the British state, to further try and sow up mistrust, and to, you know, to use this sort of propaganda as weaponization in order to weaken us. That's what he was doing. I do firmly believe that we need to take a far more robust line on high-profile British individuals who uh, work for Russia. The likes of, I mean, every British national who worked for RT, in my opinion, they should have their passports confiscated. If they love Russia so much, let them live there. Because what they are doing is stabbing their country in the back. That is their agenda, and they know it. And it's been going on in RT for years. In case it wasn't obvious, I despise RT and everything it stands for. I believe it's a threat to my country. But um, what concerns me, RT does what does, the Kremlin does what it does. What concerns me is the number of ordinary Britons who are lapping this up. You know, we don't have to sing Land of Hope and Glory and wave the flag and, you know, refuse to drink vodka. You just need a bit of common sense. You need to look at the history and pay attention to what is going on here. Because what we are seeing is victim blaming and insinuating that the UK has escalated this. It's Russia that escalated this when they chose to carry out a nerve agent attack on our soil. Russia began this, not Britain. Now, those who uh, blindly believe the Kremlin's propaganda, who just, no matter what they are told, no matter what evidence is presented, no matter how much you...